Windows firewalls, how do you configure them? How do you get them up and running? And most importantly, what do you not know how to do? I'm gonna show you all the stuff you should be doing and tell you where to go to do it easily and simply. And oh, by the way, ever so securely. All that and more coming up now. Hello everybody, my name's Adam Gordon and Edge Tanner here at IT Pro TV, coming at you with another fun, exciting episode about how do I get that stuff done in Windows Server? I always wondered about, probably scratched my head about, maybe even banged it against the wall once or twice, but couldn't really figure out on my own. Remember, you could check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for this and all other exciting and hopefully informative conversations we offer you there. And if you need more in-depth training, well, you can check us out right over at itbro.tv as well, where myself and all the edutainers hang out and spend time figuring out how to show you how to make life simple, but also keep it secure along the way. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to set up and configure the Microsoft Windows Defender Advanced Firewall on Server 2022. A common question I get asked a lot by my students and my customers, hey, we've got this firewall built right into the operating system. Is it enough for us to use that? Do we need to use one of those fancy and expensive firewalls that's either racked and stacked in our own data center, as you see a lot of stuff racked and stacked behind me here in our studios, and or do I need to use a cloud-based firewall from maybe one of the cloud providers that I work with? Well, the answer is yes to all of those, because while one firewall is good, so I often tell my customers, two is better than one and three is better than two. And what I mean by that is that it's important to have a firewall in place at different levels of interaction and the firewall on the local system. Join me here while we're talking. The firewall on the local system is gonna be really important because it's gonna help us to understand how we can protect information right at the source, but also as we're talking about potentially out in the cloud and within the network inside of our organizations as well. So different firewalls for different capabilities, but all of them equally important. We're gonna focus on how to configure that firewall at the point of connection on that server where people are often going to get information directly and use the built-in capabilities of the Windows Server operating system itself, if you will. What we're taking a look at is the ability to be able to go in and use the server manager to be able to drive access to a working with and configuration of the Windows Defender Advanced Firewall. It's built right into the operating system, and believe it or not, it's turned on and configured by default, which makes it so much simpler, because we don't even need to worry about how to install and configure it. We just really have to focus on managing it and perhaps tweaking it here and there to adjust the rules, the monitoring, the settings, the logging, to ensure that the traffic that we want to allow is able to reach the server, and of course, by extension, the traffic that we don't want reaching that server is blocked. So we're gonna open the server manager. If you're not familiar with how to do that, it normally opens by default, but if you're one of those people that closes the server manager, really doesn't want to have it bothering you when you're on your desktop and it looks like this, you have to open it up. We can simply do that by going down to the start menu, lower left. We can then navigate up right over here to our quick select area under the Windows Server tiles on the right-hand side as we open the start menu. Server manager should normally be pinned there. First tile upper left, if we click on that, we'll open up just like this. And then once it instantiates, sets itself up, we have our quick navigation bar on the left. And then over here on the right, we have the ability to work with going left to right, manage tools, view, and help. We're gonna go into tools because as I suggested, the Windows Defender firewall is already installed and configured as part of the basic operating system load. When you download or install Windows Server, the firewall, in other words, is already turned on and configured. If it wasn't, we'd have to go to manage and add that in as a service, a role, a feature, but it's already there for us. So we're gonna go to tools and we're gonna go down alphabetically and almost down towards the bottom of that list. You could see it right over here. Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security will be available. Simply highlighting and clicking on that will bring up the Microsoft Management Console, the MMC. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna minimize the server manager, just put it down on the taskbar so it's out of our way. And what we're looking at is the Windows Defender with advanced security management console. It's got our ability to navigate laid out pretty succinctly here. We see inbound and outbound rules. Inbound means ingress, inbound flow coming in from the outside, so traffic outside of the machine that's looking to connect 
will be governed by those rules. Outbound rules, egress, flow out from this machine to anywhere, local or remote, on our network through our network connections in our data center or perhaps externally beyond the boundary of our organization. Whatever that traffic ultimately is designed to go do, it's governed by outbound rules. So we see our ability to manage rule sets. And by the way, a subset of rules already available for us selected turned on to provide basic configuration protection and security while the firewall is operating out of the box, if you will. Connection security rules, our ability to create additional rules as needed for a variety of different connection types. And then monitoring, and monitoring allows us to, well, do just that. Monitor the various functions, not just of the firewall itself, but of the connection rules, as well as what are called the SAs, security associations designed to allow us to communicate securely through the firewall with other systems. And so at a high level, firewall interface looks pretty straightforward. Let's just move this over just a smidge so you can see that. Notice we can right click right up at the top of the management area on the firewall instance itself. We can import export policies, reconfiguring and applying them to the firewall to essentially uh, at scale reconfigure very uh, minute, small, or perhaps global elements of the firewall's configuration. We could restore the default policy. We've made a change, I wanna essentially hit the reset button and put it back to what it would be normally out of the box. We could diagnose and repair if there's a network connection issue, some sort of problem that's preventing the firewall from operating properly. Perhaps the service needs to be stopped and restarted. We could do that right from here with the built-in troubleshooters Microsoft provides. We could also look at properties associated with the configuration of the firewall. Now, all of those are available as a right-click shortcut menu right from over here, but we see them off on the right-hand side as well, right in this area, and you'll notice they are the same identical, as a matter of fact, and in the same order, Properties is right above help, and you can see properties is right above help and right below refresh. So these two menu elements are gonna mirror one another, and they are going to be the same. And when we come over here, we could see those elements are available to us under the actions area on the right-hand side. If we click on properties, what we will find is that we have a tabbed interface. We have a domain profile tab. These are gonna become important in just a moment. We have a property or rather a private profile tab. Whoops, let me try that one more time. Sorry about that. There we go. We have a domain profile, a private profile. We have a public profile and we have IPsec settings. All of those are available from the properties area. The first three, domain, private and public profile are kind of sitting right behind the dialog box. We just opened up to see properties and they're available for us to see in read only fashion right here. In other words, we see the current configuration of how those profiles are set on those tabs, but we don't have an ability to edit them right from here. We can just roll that up, just so you can see it disappears and comes back. But I can get to properties in more than one way. I can click right down there, and the Windows Defender Firewall properties are available, and I bring up the same exact interface, allowing me to be able to work with any one of these profiles. The domain profile configuration can be changed, this is the read-only overview of the current configuration. The ability to administer that is on the right-hand side on that tab inside the properties window as it comes up. And you'll notice right now it is on the green shield, right, white check, set to on. If I want to change that, I pull that down and notice I can change that, set that to off. And if I do that, no change is made here until I apply that change. And when I apply that change, notice all of a sudden, the changes are represented here. So I can easily configure and control different elements of the firewall by working with properties. I also have the ability to be able to go in and to look at connection security rules right from here. This middle navigation area is a collection of shortcuts and likely activities that we want to engage in are documented, defined, discussed here, and we have an ability to click directly through to get to them. But if I know my way around, I can simply come right up here, as we've talked about, and go to connection security rules and create a rule right from here. So I could do this in either place, but let's look at the existing rule set that governs our interactions first, our inbound and outbound rules, as I mentioned. There's a series of rules that are configured, and you'll notice the ones that are turned on are gonna have that same green circle uh, with 
the white check. And we can see as we look at cross on the column view all the way over row by row, we see enabled at the far right between profile and action. And we see it says yes. And if we track that, we'll see the green circles, why checks are gonna indicate yes. And where there is no icon of any kind to the left of the name, we look under enable that says no. That means those rules are currently not active. And so I can work with any one of these rules, highlight that rule if I choose to, and I can go ahead and right click and enable the rule from that shortcut option. I also have an enable rule option right over here on the right hand side, as you can see at the lower area where it says enable rule under the name of the rule that I've highlighted. So I could do that right from here as well. If I enable that rule, notice it is turned on automatically. No big deal. If I want to go ahead and disable that, I can right click and simply disable it, turning it back off again. Very easy to work with. I can look at properties of the individual rule. I can right click and do this right from here. I can delete the rule. I can copy it and modify it. I can work with it from the action menu on the right hand side as well. I can filter using a variety of mechanisms and I can create brand new rules here if I want to for a specific traffic direction. In this case, this will be a brand new inbound rule. And this can be created for either programs, ports, a predefined solution that's already in there, like one of the rule sets that may already be there for a vendor, let's say, and or I can create a custom rule, essentially starting from scratch and doing this on my own. I have a series of steps I have to engage in in order to do that. And once I'm done, assuming I'm successful, I make good choices and everything is going to work and there's no issues that would prevent the rule from being created, I'll be able to enable that rule, turn it on or enable it after it is created. It's up to me and that will govern inbound flow. I could do the same thing for outbound flow, as you can see. I can work with rules. Normally when they're turned on inbound, they're turned on outbound because you have to have a bi-directional capability to manage traffic coming in and going back out again. So we give the traffic inbound an automatic outbound path uh, so that way it can be governed by the same set of rules. But I can create a rule here if I need to. I also have the ability to create connection security rules separately. These can be clicked right over there. New rule can then be created through the wizard. But notice these are different types of rules than inbound outbound rules. They focus on outcomes, things like isolation, things like authentication exemption, server to server authentication and connection between two defined endpoints or a tunnel that authenticates connections between two computers to communicate securely and or again, a custom rule. I would create one or more of these rules as needed, choosing the appropriate type changes the options that I have to provide here, as you can see. And when I've done that, walk through the wizard, successfully configuring everything, the rule will show up here in the list and be available for me to manage. The firewall is a multifaceted solution. There's a lot going on. We can monitor the coming and goings of rule sets and traffic through the firewall by looking at firewall monitoring. We see information about any or all of the rules listed here. We can look at what's going on with them and see the status of the rule. We can look at the status of the connection security rules. And we can look at the status of the IPSEC, the IP Security Security Associations. One other thing I just wanna show you quickly, and we can do this by going into Start menu, going to Settings, and under Settings, what we're gonna do is the following. Let's just do a search right here, and we'll go, and we'll go to, oh, actually, you know what? We're not gonna do it this way. Let me show you, it's gonna show you how to do it that way, but we'll do it this way instead. Let's go to Run. I'm just gonna bring up the Services MMC, and we'll do Services, and when we do that, should get in just a second, our services Microsoft Management Console. Our system's gonna cooperate. If not, we'll try that one more time because I might have mistyped that. And let's do that. And when we've done that, get our services area to manage. And I just wanna show you the service that drives the firewall before we wrap up. We're gonna come all the way down and we're going to go to here. Windows, Windows, Windows. Where is my service? 
Windows, there it is. Nope, that's advanced threat protect. There it is, right below it, defender firewall. That's the one. And if you have to restart the firewall for any reason, and I'll zoom in so you can see this. There we are right there. If you have to restart the firewall for any reason, you're having an issue with it, that troubleshooting option I showed you where things may not be working, you can come in here, notice the status is running, it's automatic. Let me just close the console before we do this so we don't have any issues. And you'll notice I can right click and go to properties and you'll notice here, I'm not able to change the setting on this firewall. I'm not able to mess around with this service. It's controlled by the system. What I can do is I can use the troubleshooter to cycle the firewall in case there's a problem. A lot of these services we can control on our own. We're able to go in and make changes. We're able to go in and modify the startup properties. We're able to even restart the system service if necessary. The core security functions like the firewall, we don't control. The operating system does. We're barred from being able to do that. But what we can do is we can rely on the troubleshooting element to maybe stop and start that firewall if necessary. So just want to point that out to you. Make sure you're aware of that. You see that and you understand that we do have that capability if we choose to. Up to you, of course. Uh, but if there is a problem, instead of restarting the whole server, maybe you'll simply restart the firewall through troubleshooting. And hopefully that will allow you to get the firewall back up and running. All right, so this is how we can work with, configure, and a little bit of the under the hood capabilities associated with the Windows Advanced Firewall. Remember, we don't install it. We simply manage it because it's already there by default. I'm gonna go get ready for some additional exciting conversations we're planning to have with you about other features and capabilities on how do I do that in Windows Server. But until I do, and until you come back and subscribe, watch another one of our cool episodes, I'm gonna wish you happy servering, and I'll see you soon.